All right, so I'm gonna show you quickly how to do ADC DMA transactions on the STM32. So what we're gonna do is we're going up the analog, use our first ADC, and I'm gonna use PA1 and PA2. They're on channel six, channel seven, and we can go here, and they're single-ended because these are not differential pair signals. Just one input is needed. All right, so we've got two pins, so what we have to do is number conversions, pop this up to two, and then just move your, click anything else to tell the UI to update. And what you'll see is this enable conversion mode is enabled. You'll, and what this does is it says, when you do an ADC read, read multiple pins. And you have to specify what these pins are. So we're gonna read channel six, then read channel seven. And you can even read the same channel multiple times if you feel like it. All right, so we've got the scan conversion mode enabled. Now we need the continuous conversion mode, which tells the ADC to continuously read in a loop. Now, if you want those values to propagate to your register, your, your buffers, you have to also enable this DMA continuous request. So we'll go over here. We have to first add a DMA in circular mode and then we can enable this here. Cool. So now what we've done is we said, scan a multiple ADC pins in a continuous fashion and DMA that data into our buffer. All right, so what we also have to do is modify the clocks. So the in a default project, these are set way too low. The ADC needs at least 32 and since we have our ADC set to 32 megahertz and we're clocking it uh, asynchronously by one, that's too fast, so we have to lower this or we could have increased this as well. Cool, so we're going in here. So the first thing to do is we're gonna make a little buffer of an unsigned short because our data is 12 bits and you can see that if you go to back into the thing and 12 bit resolution right aligned okay cool next we're gonna call the function to start the dma and adc in channel one ADC read is our buffer, and we're, we're reading two ADC channels. All right. Just to make sure that it works, we'll exit early if something doesn't happen. And since this value is not in some global scope, it will be removed from the stack um, after this function call. So I'm just gonna put some code here to make sure it actually continues to be available to view. Okay. All right. Okay. So right now the pins are floating, which you can see right here. They're right down in the bottom left of the board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Add one to 3.3, .3, and then the other one to uh, ground. So if I hit continue, the top one is uh, the max 12 of value because it's the ref pin is set to 3.3 .3 at the current moment, and the bottom one is ground. So if you see me switch this, they should also switch. Oh. Yeah. And if you wanna see what happens when you go above what you should be, you'll see a, this number right here, it'll basically start to wrap around. So I put it into five volts. Since our ref is 3.3 .3 and five is around 
slightly more than half. That's that's how you get this value right here. Let me stop that. Before I leave, I'm just gonna leave some notes. So if your start DMA call works the first time, but the values in your buffer never actually get updated, what's most likely happened is this right here. Your ADC initialization was before your DMA, which is problematic because in this function, it sets up how to properly use the DMA. All right. Other th important things are in your IOC, this is what an STML4 looks like, but it might not be the same for some of the lower end chips. In some of the older chips, you won't get this rank selection because what it will do is it will go from top to bottom essentially. You won't be able to reorder the ADC selection. And yeah, should be all good.